Hello, and welcome to an Our Fake History digital short. Today we are getting into the weird reason why half the world is named after an obscure Italian navigator. Roll the theme. Hey everyone, my name is Sebastian Major, and I'm the host of Our Fake History, the podcast where we explore historical myths and try to determine what's fact, what's fiction, and what is such a good story that it simply must be told. Here on the Digital Shorts, I like to take a little something that we've been exploring on the longer audio podcast and serve it in a more bite-sized video package. Now, we just wrapped up a massive three-part series on Christopher Columbus, but there was something that came up in the research for those shows that I couldn't fit into the main series that I wanted to explore in this video. As we discussed, Columbus's historical reputation has waxed and waned over the centuries. But despite the fact that for a long time he was credited with discovering America, it's notable that those continents he allegedly discovered are named after somebody else. To this day, two of the world's continents, North and South America, are named in honor of a Florentine navigator named Amerigo Vespucci. Despite the fact that Vespucci is considerably more obscure than Columbus, America is named after Amerigo. The question is why? Well, here's the crazy thing. Amerigo Vespucci was made the namesake of half the world thanks to a series of letters detailing his voyages that many historians now believe were likely forgeries. Yes, most of the land in the Western Hemisphere is named after Amerigo Vespucci because of a convincing hoax. Allow me to explain. In 1507, two German cartographers working in the Duchy of Lorraine named Matthias Ringman and Martin Waldsemuller published an incredibly influential work on geography called Introduction to Cosmography. That book included a world map that attempted to be the most accurate and comprehensive depiction of the known world yet created. Now, this was significant for a number of reasons. This was the first European map to show a new continent splitting the ocean sea in half. These map makers had become convinced that the lands that were being encountered across the Western Ocean were not part of Asia, as Christopher Columbus insisted. Instead, they were convinced that what was being encountered was a previously unknown continent. This wasn't China. This was a new world. Now, in 1507, this was still just a guess. This wouldn't be confirmed, at least by Europeans, until 1513, when the conquistador Vasco Núñez de Balboa laid eyes on the Pacific Ocean from the western shore of Panama. The full extent of the Pacific would not be appreciated by Europeans until Magellan's journey, which set out in 1519. Now, this 1507 map, commonly called the Waldseemuller map, was still rudimentary. The new continent depicted on it was an incomplete depiction of what we now know as South America. Now, one of the key sources used by these German cartographers was a series of published letters attributed to the Florentine navigator Amerigo Vespucci. They were written to a government official in his hometown of Florence named Piero Soderini. As such, these letters get called the Soderini letters. In these letters, the author details four separate voyages undertaken west across the Atlantic, two under the auspices of the Spanish crown and two sponsored by the Portuguese. The first voyage allegedly embarked in 1497 and the final voyage returned in 1504. Now, these letters made it seem like in his role as navigator on these expeditions, Amerigo Vespucci had been the first to recognize that places like Honduras and Mexico were part of a large continent. It's sometimes even suggested that these letters give the impression that Vespucci also recognized that this continent was not Asia, but was in fact a new world. Now, most historians now think that's not true, but that was the impression that they gave. 
Now, many modern scholars have pointed out that there are a number of issues with the Soderini letters. It's now widely believed that either Vespucci himself lied about some of his expeditions in these letters, or, as scholars like Felipe Fernandez Armesto and Martin Lehman have argued, the letters were not even written by Vespucci. It's highly likely that these letters were written by an unknown forger who had access to Vespucci's papers. That forger was specifically trying to enhance Amerigo Vespucci's profile as the discoverer of the new world at the expense of Christopher Columbus. Experts have pointed out that there are some massive differences between the Soderini letters and another set of authentic correspondences between Vespucci and Lorenzo de' Medici. In these private Medici letters, which were discovered much later by researchers, only two of the four voyages mentioned in the widely circulated Soderini letters are attested to. So these days, most experts are only comfortable saying that the second and third Vespucci voyages really happened. Now, why does this matter? Well, that first Vespucci voyage described in the Soderini letters was said to have taken place from 1497 to 1498. If that was true, then it would have meant that Vespucci's crew would have been the first Europeans to make it to the mainland of what we now call the American continents. But most scholars now believe that this first voyage did not take place. There are all sorts of problems with the description of that first voyage in the Soderini letters that make it suspect. For instance, at one point, the author of the letter claims that from a starting point off the coast of what is today Honduras, the ships traveled 870 leagues northwest. This is an impossible course. If they had actually sailed 870 leagues northwest of Honduras, they would have traveled across the mainland of Mexico and would have wound up in the Pacific Ocean. We know that now. But in the early 1500s, folks back in Europe had no way of verifying what was in those letters. Thanks to the widely circulated Soderini letters, Matthias Ringman and Martin Waldseemuller assumed that Amerigo Vespucci had discovered the mainland of what they now assumed was a new continent. And so they made the fateful decision to label the new continent on their map, America. In the preface to Introduction to Cosmography, Ringman wrote, quote, I see no reason why anyone could properly disapprove of a name derived from that of Amerigo, the discoverer, a man of sagacious genius. Now, it is a little unusual that the mapmakers chose to base the name of this new continent on Amerigo Vespucci's first name. That's the kind of thing that was usually only done with royalty. But I suppose they thought the continent of Vespuccia didn't really roll off the tongue as well as America. So it's likely that the mapmakers were misled by a fake letter that described a fake voyage. This is not to say that Amerigo Vespucci was not a talented navigator who made some very important contributions to the European understanding of that part of the world. However, his first voyage to the mainland was likely in 1499, a solid year after Columbus had encountered the northern shore of South America on his third voyage. So again, if we're going to look past all the indigenous place names that predate all these European visitors, there's a better case to be made that we should be calling these continents North and South Colombia or North and South Christophoria, if we're going to use the weird Waldseemuller naming convention. Anyway, the Waldseemuller map ended up being printed roughly 1,000 times and was distributed all over Europe. This meant that scholars got used to referring to the new continent as America. Soon, new maps were being produced that followed the precedent set by the Waldseemuller map. The term America was commonly used to refer to the continents on the west side of the Atlantic. Now, this included the incredibly influential and important world map created by Gerardus Mercator in 1569. That Mercator map still influences how world maps are produced today. 
By the time Mercator completed his map, the convention of calling the Western continents America had been firmly established, and there was no going back. So, there you have it. America is called America because of some fake history. To find out more about Columbus and hundreds of other historical myths, like and subscribe to this YouTube channel, and subscribe to the audio version of the Our Fake History podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.